Hi everyone, I'm Jeff. Welcome back to Sound and Voltage in this series on FM synthesis. FM is a pretty deep topic that I think hasn't been well explored by other synth tubers. And I've wanted to dig deep for a while, but it's taken me a bit to figure out how to approach a topic this big and with so many weird side roads to go down. In the end, I decided that probably a small series of videos that can tackle things one bit at a time was the way to go, leaving space to look down some of those side roads as we build up to a full view of FM synthesis. Today we start that journey, and I'm going to kick things off by looking at slow frequency modulation and the controls we have over it. Along the way, I'm going to introduce some of the ideas and terminology that appear in the original 1973 paper on FM by John Chowning. By the end of this video, I'm hoping that you'll have a better intuition of what's happening when you start to explore FM, and as a bonus, you can learn how FM radio works. If that sounds interesting, then you're watching the right video. Let's take a look. Before we go there, just a reminder to say that I don't monetize this channel, I don't take sponsors, I don't have Patreon. If you end up enjoying the video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps the channel. Okay, this is the basic patch diagram for frequency modulation. There are two oscillators. If you're coming from a keyboard background, you might see these called operators. They're just oscillators, though. And we give the two of them specific names, carrier and modulator. Not surprisingly, the modulator is the one that's going to do the modulating, and the carrier is the one that's going to be modulated. There's really three controls here that we're interested in. The frequency of the carrier and the modulator, and the amplitude of the modulator waveform as controlled by the FM input attenuator on the carrier. Typically, FM happens with the carrier and modulator both running at audio rate. But to get started, I want to start off slow. I have two oscillators here. One is the afterlater cascades. That's going to be our carrier. It's running at 440 hertz with the sine wave. That's A above middle C, and we're going to spend a lot of time listening to that tone. The other is the Captain Big O, and I have it turned all the way down as low as it'll go, acting as an LFO. On the oscilloscope, you can see the green line going up and down. That's the LFO rising and falling slowly. Now I'm going to turn up the modulation a little bit. Immediately, we can hear the pitch change, and we can see the sine wave changing in length on the screen. As the LFO goes up, the frequency of the sine wave goes up. As the LFO goes down, the frequency drops. Let's check this out on a fancy new spectrum visualizer I built for our FM explorations. You can see the center frequency there, the red line at 440 hertz. And the frequency we're hearing, let's call that the instantaneous frequency, is sliding up and down. I'm going to turn the modulation up a little bit, and now it's deviating even more from the carrier. An important thing to note here is that the frequency of the carrier oscillator hasn't changed. It's still set to 440 Hz. The frequency of the modulator hasn't changed. It's still turned down as low as I could set it. The only thing that's changing is the depth of the modulation, the amplitude of the modulating oscillator as it's applied to the carrier. That's controlling how much the instantaneous frequency is deviating from the carrier. So what happens if we turn up the modulator frequency a little bit? It increases the speed at which the instantaneous frequency is sweeping back and forth through that range of deviation. So now we can identify what our three controls do in terms of this example. The carrier frequency defines the center around which the instantaneous frequency is going to deviate. The amplitude of the modulation wave, also called the depth of modulation, that controls how wide the deviation range is going to be. And the frequency of the modulator controls how fast the instantaneous frequency is going to sweep through that deviation. Another interesting point is that the deviation is equal on either sides of the carrier. And that's because I started here with linear FM. I'm going to dig into exponential FM in a future video, but for now I'm going to stick with linear FM just to keep from confusing things. Right now the modulator frequency is really low, so we can actually hear the frequency changing. But as we turn it up, those sweeps go faster and faster. And we hit a point where we no longer hear the sweep. We just get a new sound of a single pitch. The sweeping through the deviation is still happening, only it's doing it a hundred times a second or so. We're going to spend most of the rest of the series looking at what happens now. And to cap things off for this first video, there's something kind of fun I think we're ready to look at now, FM radio. The use of the term FM for both is no accident, and you've already learned everything you need to know to understand how FM radio works. So let's take a look. The carrier frequency is just the frequency of the radio station on the FM dial and there's going to be a little deviation back and forth that represents the broadcast. That signal being broadcast has a frequency and an amplitude, and when the sound is loud, the deviation is large. When it's quiet, the deviation is small. When the pitch is high, it oscillates through that deviation quickly. When the pitch is low, it oscillates more slowly. 
Literally, that's all there is to FM radio. Neat. Okay, that's it for this first video. So far we've looked at the basic operation of FM at a slow rate, the controls we have over it. We also introduced a couple of terms that we're going to come back to, like deviation and instantaneous frequency. And we got a sneak peek at what happens when things speed up. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. Thanks for coming on this FM adventure with me. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And in particular, you might want to hit the notification bell so you find out when future videos in this series land. Thanks for watching.